radio or whatever I'm back I think that I want I want to um, pretty much repeat this um, ugh. I want to repeat this whole thing because I want to go around you know, but instead of doing a clone I need to um, I need to insert each thing here. Um, now I need to now what I want is a general way of making um, a um, find ocean cell. A general way of making a column and a row turn into a single number. Um, so if I do find ocean cell, current column, current row, then I want I want that to be um, basically set. Uh, that will just be set result. Um, so that what what the idea there is that I can make it calculate which cell to put the um, which cell to put the numbers in. Uh, if that makes sense. Am I back up? I don't know. I don't know if I'm. Just let me check. My dashboard seems to be there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's back. Um, I'm not sure if. Um, yeah, okay. So, basically, I want to make result equal the number in my list for each of these blocks. So, I want to go. What's 15 times 15? It's a number. It's definitely a number. Um, so my initial fish and shark need to be created. Let me think about this. I I want to. Can you create random numbers? I definitely don't need to create a random number. Pick a random number. I definitely don't need to be able to do that. Um, if I go from one. Is it 0 to 100 or 1 to 100? 1 to 100. And if I have a 1% chance, if it finds me a 1, then, um, then, yeah, so, okay, that makes sense. So, I got, I want to find my results so And that is going to be a math equation of essentially adding my um, column to my row times um, to my row minus one times my ocean x. So let's go to my variables now. I need my um, row minus one, and I need to multiply that by my ocean. width and then I, I need to add to that the column and what that should do is give me a position inside a list that corresponds to a square in here and that will work because what I'm saying is if I if I have column one then it'll be row number one because my row will also be one row minus one is zero times width is 0 plus 1 is 1. If I'm on row 1, if I'm on row 2, for instance, I would go row minus 1 equals 1 times ocean width, which is 15, so I get 15. But 15 is there, and then I add column, so I add 1, and it becomes 16, so that's this number here. So in theory, that result will be 
the number in my list that corresponds to the square that I that I want column and row wise. So that's going to find that. So that's going to set result to the current index. And then I want to find how do I set stuff in the list? So insert add a thing to list. So basically I just want to add. Actually, I don't need to use this at the minute, do I? Because just thinking about this, really, I only have to add things into the list right now because it just needs to be random. So I can go repeat for this is what I thought originally, and then I got a bit confused and stopped doing it. But I can do repeat for ocean height times ocean width. See this here. I need that. Um, I don't know if I can use that inside a sprite. Mm. But I really need that inside my sprite. Can you can you relocate stuff inside a sprite? Oh no, I have done that because in here now. Oh, I've done it twice as well, so just delete that. So now I've got that in here. That's good. Um, don't drop it. So, because you can go, you can. I basically don't need to do anything but loop through ocean height times ocean width number of things and add something to the con to the ocean content each time. Now. What I do need to do though is I need to work out if I'm adding a fish or if I'm adding a um, shark. So the first thing I do is I pick a random number and I do fish first, I think. Well, actually, should we do that? Because no, let's do shark. So if um, so if oh, I do want an else actually. So I want if a random number. And then I want another is that will be else as well. So if a random number between one to a hundred is less than oh no, if a random number from one to a hundred is greater than no, so I want it the other way around. If a random number between one to a hundred is less than shark percentage, and my shark percentage is um, gonna be two, I think. Then um, then duplicate that. So, so add shark to ocean. So add shark to ocean content. Um, oh, I've got I messed that up. So no, that so that should be in there. Oh, come on. And then basically, I need to then copy that bit. Um, and that should be pick a random between one hundred, but and then put the fish percentage in. So then, if my fish percentage, then add fish. So that'll add a fish, that'll add a shark, and otherwise, um, so if, else, if. So I don't need that else, do I actually? If that, what have I done here? Yeah, no, I've done one. So I've done the else. So if that, add shark. If then I add a fish, otherwise I add a, an empty. So when I run it now, I mean that sounds doesn't sound right to me. I mean I oh a million fishes. Well okay that that's not right. But is it is it just gonna keep on adding? Um hang on. Variables. Um, delete all of ocean content. So, oh, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Because I need to initialize my custom values, then I need to populate my ocean. So now I've got empty, I've got fish, empty, 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 I've got a shark, I've got empty fish, empty, 
empty, empty, empty, empty, empty, empty, empty, empty. To be fair, if I've got 200 sections, how many sharks do I even have here? Like, basically none. Well, I think I ended up with one shark. Okay. Now, I, when I draw my thing, I want to make, I want to draw it so that if there's a fish in my spry, so, um, define, find ocean cell. Actually, maybe I don't need this in here because I just need to say, um, I just need, to be honest, I just need to have a set costume. Let's just do that. Um, because in here, like, set costume. Actually, oh god, I don't know. Yeah, look, yeah, let's do that. Make a block called set costume. Set costume. And um, is anyone actually watching this? I don't like I've got any comments. Right, so set costume. And that is going to go. Forget about result. That, that is my answer there. So what I want to do is delete that. Um, this is going to be a bit, this is where stuff starts getting a bit messy, I think. I want to go if another if if the um, if the Item one of item that of ocean content. See that's when that's where really what you want what I want to do here is, is go to variables and make a variable called um, called content called my content for this sprite, and then I want to set my content to that. Because it just makes basically the reason I'm doing that is just so that really it's so much easier now. So because then I can just go if um, my content equals so if my content equals fish, um, then um, appearance. Um, switch costume to fish, and then I'm going to duplicate that. Else, if it equals shark, then duplicate, switch my costume, and then duplicate and um, switch my costume to empty ocean or shark. Okay, so that's switch costume, and then I want to make switch costume. I want to put switch costume here. Um, so then now if I run it, I should end up with um, this is empty lead, so. um, I should end up with a grid. Well that's not working, is it? Oh it's I mean maybe it has. Um, um is this all empty? No, this look. There's a fish there. There's a shark there. Now. Right. So blatantly, this just doesn't work. Oh, oh, I know why it hasn't worked. It's because I've got this random col row and columns still sitting in here that do nothing. The goggles. Um, row minus that. Oh god, I've really ruined this. Item of. I don't need those. Those can go. Um, inside my actual variables, I have a thing called a column. And. I have a thing called a row, and those are what I need. No way. Row minus one times ocean width. Add column. That's my location. I am at that location. Set to my content, and then we go. Oh. Um. Oh. Oh. I understand why it's done that. Um, it's because some bright spark told me to change my bloody spark costumes. All right. Um,
what on earth is going on with these? So look, I want to do that there. And I want to basically delete that. I'll delete that. And then I want to um, duplicate that and duplicate that. And I'll go and make this outline black and make the fill into this goldy orangey colour for my fishy. Uh, yep. And then I want to do the same here, so outline, uh, change the outline to black. And then fill it with like a grey like colour for the shark. I've got my sh this needs to be called fish. This needs to be called shark. And then I'll go back to my code and then fuck all that up. Um, so I can start playing. There we go, I've got shark there, I've got fishies in my ocean now. Uh, that is pretty sweet. Okay. So I can do that. Now what I want to try is how quickly these dudes can update um, when things change because obviously it, it drew. So just as a random thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, a populate. I'm going to I'm going to do populate ocean. I'm going to do a little test. So spacebar. Let's get the space bar, that's my brother's favourite. When I get the space bar, I'm going to do a, a populate ocean um, with like a 10%, 2%. And then I'm going to do a, I'm going to make a, some, I'm going to make a broadcast. So broadcast that um, new message, which is, um, Ocean changed. Now I'm going to say, oh, the ocean's changed. Cool, the ocean's changed. So the sprite is going to um, is going to now need to listen for that. So when I receive ocean changed, um, it's going to set costume. Now if I go to um, back to my stage, basically spacebar should do it. So I run it. But now, in theory, whenever I hit spacebar, it needs to re-update my content, and then it needs to um, change all the pictures. Oh, um, but I need. Do you know what? That was stupid. Populate ocean is going to delete ocean content. Way look, look how cool that is. That's amazing, right? So now I can have. A simulation that's re-updating everything super fast after I've drawn my original grid because my sprites will change my costume. That is pretty good. Right. I like that. That is that I like that. yeah. You should definitely do this for your chess thing because that's gonna be that's gonna not chess whatever. Because you think all you need to do is have your grid copy and what's in your data and you don't need to redraw anything at all, it just changes its costumes. It's amazing. Um So what's going to happen is, and I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Um, I need to have it so that fish. So what what is what you do is you step the, the simulation on, and you step forward. When you step forward, each fish like gets one day older. Um, after a certain amount of days, they have a chance to propagate another fish into a, any adjacent square. Um, sharks, they have got a hunger level, and that hunger level goes down each day. And if they don't find a fish to eat, they die. They can also have an age where they die as well. Um, so I need to have some way of tracking fish's, fish's lifespan 
um, sharks hunger level um, and also when sharks eat they can also potentially reproduce another shark which will share their two hunger levels between them so like if a shark is on eight hunger and it, and it eats a fish goes up um, it, it can split into two sharks that both have four hunger and that shark will go into another square so that's the plan the fishes the fishes and sharks will go um, um, yeah, I like this. Maybe I should just leave it like this. It's press space bar. Um, but the idea is going to be that it's like a little simulation of an ocean and, the, and they're all swimming around or whatever. So I need to have it so that... Let's change the room. Let's just see how good it is with some, some higher numbers. Let's change it to um, 30 by 30. Um, actually... I need to move my position as well then. So let's bring X back by like 50. Um, and let's bring um, Y. I don't know how Y works at all at the minute. I think we're going up the screen from a zero somewhere. So Y needs to go higher as well. Let's try that. Yeah, that's right. So I'm drawing it from there. It's going to take a while to draw the grid now. I've also, I think I, I've noticed that if you don't, if you try and draw something off of an edge, it doesn't actually work. Um, is that broken? I don't, okay, it's sort of broke. 11, 11. It's broke, it's stopped going. It's stopped. Um, I don't know why I did that. Why the hell is it stopping there? Twenty-five. Why is it stopping there? I have no. I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense. A twenty-five grid by twenty-five grid. Try that. It's so weird. It just decided to stop drawing. It's done it again. Look. Uh, well, that's annoying. So I can only have 300, I can only have maximum 300 squares. So, what's the bet? What's, what's the square root of 300? Seventeen. So I can do seventeen. I should be able to do seventeen by seventeen. That's real, that's real annoying, that is. Right. So, there we go. Now, how do we make fishes have like lifespans and fucking everything. How do we do it? How 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 can we especially when they can move. So a fish a fish is going to so this is how simulation will work. Fish will move, then if they are old enough, they have a chance to to reproduce into an adjacent random adjacent square. Um then Sharks will, if they are adjacent to a fish, they'll eat that fish and they'll move on to that square where the fish was. And then, oh no, and sorry, and if fishes move, oh no, actually, the first thing for fishes, it will die. So if a fish gets too old, it will die. So, so fishes die. Then 
they move, if they're still alive, to an adjacent empty square. Um, then they reproduce, and then sharks will go and try and move into a, an empty square. No, sharks will either move into a square with a fish first. If they can't, they'll move to a random square, and then they will get older, and their hunger will go down by one. If, if a shark's hunger goes down to zero, it dies. Um, and if it eats a fish, then it gets a certain hunger level, I think probably maybe maybe call it like four, so it can go up by four if it eats a fish. Um, and then there's the reproduction of the sharks as well, but they, they actually divide the shark's health between them. And then one shark will still be aging and the other shark will... Well, anyway, that's the plan, but how the hell do you do that? So, I've got a fish in a square. I think what I might have to do is have it work so that um, we do, we're essentially doing what you did, Pip, with, um, with your pieces. So I need to encode the information about the, the, the fish into the... Into the into the row. So what can I do with that shit? I'm really pissed off by this clone limit bullshit. Because like, if you, when you draw, it takes ages. There must be a, there there needs to be a way of not doing like a progressive draw and just doing it all at once so that it doesn't take forever. Or let me have infinite clones. I mean, why three hundred? That's a dumb limit. Ugh. Hey. I mean, any ideas here would be super helpful. I guess I could have an age list, a hunger list, um, and a, a like a, a I think that's all I need is an age list, and a hunger list. The problem is, I don't want my ages to only go up to nine. I want my ages to be able to be quite um, older. My could, I guess, in kind of just a moment, actually. I think I need I need to have a separate list. The, the reason why I've got a problem having a separate list is because, like, you're going to have to go when you move a fish to one square, from one place to another, you have to make sure that you also do that in your age list and in your um, in your hunger list if, if it's a shark you're moving. And like, that's real hard. Mm, this is why you need object orientation. <laughs> I'm saying that I need to make it so that I know how hungry my sharks are, how old my fishes are, also how old my sharks are. Well, actually, I did see a thing where basically you can make it so that the sharks will die if they don't eat enough, but if they do eat enough, they'll reproduce and essentially they split into two so that you don't need to track a shark's age. So I just need to have a fish's age and a shark's hunger, so we need one number related to them. Trouble is that 
you know, shark, but you want fishes to sort of last for about 40 cycles. And you, so, yeah, but each fish is, um, each fish has to have its own variables. Like I need to go through the whole grid, and every time I find a fish, I need to run like a, a simulation on it to say, okay, get your age, get this, do your what's its. Yeah, the clones. So the clones. The clones can track variables separately, right? And that's what I'm doing. So I know that. So I could. But the thing is, if the fish moves to another square, it's a different clone. And I don't. There's no way to reference like a clone from the a block in the background, is there? So I can't go, well, find clone number 10 and change its variables. You can't do that, can you? So it doesn't it doesn't work. Like unless you can Yeah, I can't I can't see how you can do that. And you can't really check adjacency using the clone, because the clone will be like, well, I know I've got anything new. Yeah. I think I do need two lists. Oh yeah, 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 no, that's better. If I have a fish list and a shark list, that's better, isn't it? Because, because No, if you have if you have a, if you have a fish list and a shark list, then you can yeah. Well, I don't know. No, neither do I. If you have a fish list and a shark list, then in the fish list you don't need to say it's fish. You can just have the age, so they can all just start off at like one, and they can go up. But if it's not empty, then there's a fish there. And the same for the sharks. You can just have a hunger value in there, and that goes down. But if it's not empty, then there's a shark in there. So you'd have to go and check both lists to see whether the, whether a square was empty or not each time. But that might be a little bit easier to track. You'd be like, because you can because you can go through the fish list. Yeah, that's I think that is I think that's the how you, I think that's how you do it. I think that's just got to be how you do it. It's got it's got to be. I think. I don't know. Let's try it like that. So I'm going to make a fish list. Fish list. It's my favourite type of list, as everybody knows. And then I've got shark list, which is my third favourite type of list. Um, okay. So I'm going to delete the ocean content list. This is going to cause all sorts of problems for um, my code, I imagine. Yeah, so I did. I did think about what you're saying. One list for fish and sharks, and one for age and hunger. But why do that? The, 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 I think the problem I've got with that is that if I'm if I want to move something between, then I have to move it in both lists, which I don't like. Like if I want to move a fish, I've got to move the fish, and then I've got to move its age somewhere else. Whereas if I just have a fish list where it keeps its age, if I move a fish, I just move one value somewhere. And um, so that's like you, the trouble is that you you then have to check two lists to see whether it's empty or not. But like either way, I think that I think checking if it's empty in two lists is less annoying than having to say whenever I move something, I have to move it in both lists because I'm moving a shark. Oh, you got to move its age as well because you have to track it along. Whereas if you just go, I'm a fish, and a fish is represented by its age in a fish list, um, then that yeah you could do that but then you would have to have some sort of indication on that list of whether it was age and hunger and then it would be tough to extract the um, the, the number say I, say I wanted my fish to last 40 years uh, oh that is a very good idea that's a very good idea so my ocean list. So what? Yeah, but then what about empty spaces? And mind you, empty spaces are zero, isn't it? And like that way, it just automatically dies. Like if it goes to zero, then it's just dead. 
So, so zero is not zero is empty. Negative is hunger. And if it go, if like if my hunger goes to zero, then do fuck all because my hunger's gone to zero. Oh, guess what? You're dead. Yeah, that that's that's that that works. So okay, now I need to go undo my whole. Oh, hang on, I can undo for that. So okay, so. Um, fish is fish is always going to start with um, one age. Um, so fish is always always going to be one. Sharks will start with shark hunger, and empty is zero. So let's just make it minus eight for now. But I'm not going to keep it like that. Minus eight. So my sprite will go um, if. My content is greater than um, you could set the age to 40 and count down so that when it reaches zero, they die. Yeah, that's true. You can give them a, you can give them a lot. It's a bit harsh though, you're giving them a time limit on their life, a bit horrible. Um, this is actually this is actually the this is actually a really good way of doing it. Like, well done, honestly. This is why this is why we're like team lamb. Um, okay. My content greater than I know it's the same thing either way. It just feels horrible. You're like saying to the fish, you only have forty days to live. Here, here's your starting number, and it's count, counting down to doom. My count, my content. If my content is greater than one, then you're a fish. If my content is less than Oh no, sorry, grand zero, grand zero. Um, and if my content is less than zero, then you're a shark. You may possibly even be a baby shark. <laughs> if my content is... I've done it all the way around, haven't I? That's stupid. Baby shark. Oh, cool. I mean, I don't understand how. Did you do it? Did you do it as a? Um, did you do it as a? Um, uh, did you do it as a function in the end for your check-in? Baby shark. Okay, fine. I say you should do some of it though, just to like get a, get a, like feel for it. If you just it will, even if you just take those like set variable one, set variable two, run broadcast to a function. Well, you you can take. The thing is, at the minute, they're very very hard to explain why they would use them because they haven't got a return value. But if they had, a, if they have a return value, then then it would be like super good because when you with return values, you can you can go like do a math function and return it. So you, instead of having a massive line of stuff that you've got, you can just go do this, do this, and it just means you've got a little, a small amount of stuff. And if you're repeating the same block of this big load of plus times minus whatever, you can just do it in one thing and then have it. In multiple places. The trouble with it is it doesn't have a return value, which means the only way to do that is to run it and then get a result and then stick the result variable in, and that's shit. Like it, they need to put return values into into blocks. I, it doesn't make any sense to me why they have a block without without a return value because they're almost next to useless, and you're, it makes it hard to explain to people why. Yeah, I know, but if you like, you're in your code, right? You have. Set variable one, set variable two, broadcast. You can take those three blocks out and put do melee one zero, and then do melee one zero will use the one and zero instead of, and then you haven't got two variables which in your code. You don't need those two variables anymore, so you can delete them because they're just getting passed. They're just getting passed in. You don't need them. Like the, the only reason they're there is to act as a temporary global thing that something else can pick up. And in code, that's actually a really bad thing to do. 
and they, Scratch encourages it. Like it's telling you, yeah, just make global variables. You definitely shouldn't be making global variables if you're trying to actually make a, like a, a an application because they're just horrible. Like you, you, especially if you're using an object-oriented approach, you don't want to have like a big, big old global nonsense thing, right? So let's take. What I need to do is I need to oh make some global variables. Hang on. So shark starting hunger. Okay, and I'm gonna make fish lifespan. Um and I'm gonna go and set those so set my shark starting hunger to um, 10. I'm going to set my uh, um, fish lifespan. What's fish lifespan? Fish lifespan is going to be 40. Um, and then I'm just going to do that and fish lights back there. Okay, so now fishes should start at 40 and sharks should start at minus 10. And that's working. Um, so let's make them smaller. Oh, come on. Okay, so it's still working. Right. Then I now I need something that goes does a thing, waits. So it's going to be in here, isn't it? So after I have set everything up and initialized it. Then basically, I just want to do run the simulation. Oh, okay. So basically, I, I'm just going to have repeat forever, aren't I? So forever. Um, repeat. For each square, so this here is is a, a block that goes through each um, thing. Um, I don't want to create clones though. So in there, now here is here is it here's the thing here's the thing. I don't know whether I can make this work on, but see this block here. I'm always going to want, I want, because if you think about it, I need to do like make the fish move. Well, actually, like deal with fish, then I need to deal with sharks. So I need two loops. I don't want to make, I don't want to, I don't want to activate a shark out of, on a fish's turn. So I want to go through the whole grid once and do fish stuff. And then I want to go through the whole grid again and, um, uh, do sharks, but I also I need to do I need to do a, an adjacent scan of every um, square. So where's that function that I meant? Find ocean cell. So here, so basically I want to do find ocean cell. Um, and that's going to be current column, current row, current column, and current row. So that's going to find my ocean cell. So now my result is going to be the ocean cell. And then I. And then I want to be able to, from that, well, first, I need to go for each ocean cell. I need to check if it's a fish, because if it's a fish, then then um, 
I'm doing shit with it. Okay, so get my ocean cells and check in my ocean cells are fish. So basically, I need to check if my result is greater than um, greater than zero. So um, if my result is greater than zero, now this is where and I know this is not going to be of any interest to you, to like you really. This is where I would I would do be starting to make things like I would make a function called is fish. And if I could, if I could make a function that may that returned a boolean block, like if you could drop something in there that said is fish result, and then the function took the result number, checked in the field, said, oh, it's greater than whatever. Yes, it's a fish, and returned it. Then, like you're, you're laughing. Well, you're not laughing. I mean, but the point is that 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 the. the um, the, the idea of a function is that you can use it to jump drop out bits of code. Now I was looking, actually I, I was Googling it and there's loads of requests for, to, for this all, all over the place. So can you please get Scratch to return, have return values from functions? Because if you can have a, if you could make a, my, my block that instead of, instead of the, the block looking like um, a, a section like that, if it was a diamond, if it, if it, if you, if it was a, um, no, an actual boolean value that you had, then you could just drop that in when you liked. And I, I think I found I found a like, fellow example of like, oh here's here's how you want to block to to return a function, and, and it's like it's it's so much better. Like they different they need to do it because it's it's kind of shit, isn't it? Anyway, I can't see it now. But the, 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 the idea, the point I was trying to make is that you, you want to go, oh, I just found a draw fee um, video where they're trying to draw um, the Disney characters as Dark Side bosses, but they're doing it as like the second one. The first one was great, but they're doing it as the second one. I love these guys. Right, so I'm saying. Am I a fish? And the point with, with something like that is actually you can do that. But you, if you wanted to have your code be a bit more like readable. You could you 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 could just use functions for that. Like you'd go, oh, make a block that says is fish, and then you you know you 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 can you can read what it's doing. Like even if it doesn't benefit you in terms of the amount of stuff on the screen or whatever, it benefits you in the fact that you can go find ocean cell with the current column and the current row, and then is my ocean cell a fish? And you know that would be that would be pretty great. And if find ocean cell was a number and it returned a number, then it would look, then it would come into like one of these shaped things instead, wouldn't it? So if you say you had a red circle that was like ocean cell, um, and then like an is fish which had a parameter in that was a block. I don't know if I can, I don't know if you can really, um, if you can really. Uh, I don't know if you can really demonstrate it, but but essentially, you could go Notepad, go Notepad. Essentially, and this is how code is coming to it. You could do. You could do. Is fish, and then you could pass find ocean cell column row like that. And then I wouldn't need to set a result or any, anything. I could just go if ocean cell column row is a fish, then do this thing. On one line, if ocean cell is a fish, then do this thing. If it, and that would be simple, simply be able to be done by having it so that a block could return a number. That's it, that's all you'd need. Right, anyway, so for each cell, find the current 
entry in the list and ask if I'm a fish. Now if I'm a fish, the first thing I want to do with a fish is reduce my age. So I want to do this. Place item result. Ah. No, and I've got a local message like delete. Place item result of ocean content with result minus one. And now I need to see if I'm still alive. So if um, am I still alive? Delete. Conscience, am I dead? So if a fishy is still alive, then it's going to move to a random adjacent space. Now, how do I find a random adjacent space? How do I find a random adjacent space? How do I find a random adjacent space? How do I find it? How do I tell someone to me? Because I don't know. Uh, random adjacent space. Now this again, so I'm going to need to find a random adjacent space and check adjacent spaces and do all sorts of stuff a load of times. And... Right. Yeah, but the thing about that is I need to know which adjacent spaces are available. Oh, I've got a great idea. Okay. That was really, um, yeah, overexcitable. Okay. Uh, um, so, oh my god, I was so. I need to be able to put every adjacent space that is available into a list. So I'm going to do populate adjacent. I'm going to make a little thingy called populate adjacent. That's going to take a um, ocean cell. So this is going to, well, I, I need to move to a random adjacent space, right? but I need to know which adjacent spaces are available to pick one. Use the mouse pointer list to translate a script. What does that mean? What does that mean? So I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Coordinate search. But I need. But I don't have a mouse pointer. This is this is this is um. I don't have a mouse pointer. Yeah, well, I can't really like do anything about that. Delay. It's the best. We love delays. Right. What I need to do is I need to go through a set of potential. Um, all right. Let me just, let me just explain what I'm thinking about. What number knows what space is this?
I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Number no lots of basics. Huh? All right, look. I've got. I've got to have a. Um, I'm going to have a grid. Um. And and. I'm I'm in one point on that grid. I've got. Nine. I've got eight spaces around me. But yeah, so I've got eight spaces around me. Um. But some of those spaces are going to be full. Okay, they're going to have something in them. Yeah, so my, my, I can do that. So the space, so I, I, but I, so basically, I need to look around to find a random space to move into. Okay, but the way that I'm planning to do it is to first find out what is available, and the reason for that, and I'll tell you the reason for that, is because this function will be able to be expanded to use the sh to look for fish around me, and it, uh, when I'm a shark, so the shark, the fish will get to go. Is there any fish around me? Yeah, there is. Well, then those are my options to move into, and then if there isn't, then it will then do a general. Okay, we'll find empty ones, and then it'll move into one of those. Yeah, I know this is what you've been doing, but I can't. I I am, um, but but I I need to pick a random one, right? So I need to work out all of my available ones first, and then pick a random one of those. And so. so The other thought I'm trying to come up with is how do I make a loop that can um, do da, 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 da. I want to do like one zero not minus one one zero minus one zero zero but I don't want to do zero zero mind you I can do zero zero because it'll always be occupied so it doesn't matter so. And this, again, this is where you want to be able to have a a variable. Yeah. So, but have you? But basically, have you gone? Oh, minus one column, minus one row, plus one column, plus one row, like that, and just gone through each possible thing as like a. Thing is, if I pick a random number and that space is populated, I have to do it again, right? And I have to do it again, and I have to do it again, and keep on picking one. And what if I keep picking the same random number forever? So, so like, if I do, um, I'm just going to make a loop variable, loop one, and loop two. Actually, I've got a loop. I'm going to call it index one. Index. Index one. And where's my loop? Can I rename them? Rename them. And call it index two. So I've got, I've got two indexes, and I'm just going to use those for now because I need them. But how do you identify them as available? Without storing them somewhere. That's what I don't. Know. If I, this is what I'm trying to do. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to identify something as available.
，好，先打个。呃，搞了。Yeah. Yeah, I know. So basically, I need to do something like that. Actually, I don't need that. It's in seven rank. Oh, that's wrong, isn't it? That's wrong. That that bit there. Find ocean cell. I need to actually do item of ocean. Of, of ocean. I need to do item result of ocean content. Item result of ocean content. Which is why um, that was right, and I've ruined it because. Edit. Let's go back to what it used to be. Um, ocean cell. Um, find. I don't need to do that. Delete. So. Yeah. Because you're trying to be like, you're trying to be like, oh look, all the way diagonal and all the way this. I just want to look around the square to see stuff. So in the minute I'm going to go like, I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to do here, but basically I'm going to go like, um, actually, see that's annoying. That's really annoying because. I don't. Ugh. Well, I've. Uh, okay. Well, uh, well. When I've done mine, you can tell me how shit it shit it looks. Edit. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to. Let's go back to column. And row. I need that because I want to be able to remove. Okay, so. Um. This is going to say, to populate JSON. No, I don't know. Basically, populate JSON is going to put a list of stuff in here. Um, edit. Um, So what I need to do is I need to do find ocean cell. Um, um, call plus index one. variables, index 1 and index 2 call row oh no, it's supposed to go in there that goes in there that goes in there but like what I'm doing now okay, is the in here, this is going to go for all nine squares. That it's going to go through me and everything else, but that's okay. I don't really mind if I pick myself because I know I'm full. So I'll just check me here anyway. So 
if you go um, if you go I don't know the one phone no is but if you if I, what I'm saying is if, if there was so then I've got my result now so I can now do my if result um, if my result is um, now this is where it's a bit weird because I need to go if um, it's where the fish comes into it if fish in this or so if if fish and um, if if fish and um, So if fish and result is greater than no, I am. Oh god, this is annoying. It's because you need to have okay. So if I am if I am result. Actually, let's just do that thing that I did with my other one. So variable content. Cell content. Okay. So then I can do set cell content to um, uh, item number. So cell content to item number result of Ocean content. So that should that should get me um, whether it's a that should get me the number. So cell content is now the number, and now I can do fish or um, cell content. No, so, so it should be if fish and cell content. It should be if fish and cell content is greater than zero because I'm looking for fish, or simply. So content equals zero. Uh, equals zero. Because because in that in that case um, I'm looking for empty. So I'm either looking for fish or empty. So if cell content is zero, or if it's fish and greater than zero, no equals zero. Oh um, no no, I want greater than zero here because zero is nothing. Zero is nothing. Because so the, the fish the fish here says whether I'm looking for fish or not. So if I am looking for fish, so that's, if you're looking for fish and the cell content is bigger than zero, then you found a fish. Or if your cell content equals zero because you're not looking for fish, you're looking for empties. So either empty or there's a fish, but depending on depending on what that that parameter that fish for parameter has been setting as. Then I want to add <clears throat> um, a thing to adjacent list. Also, I want to at the start of that delete all from adjacent list. So empty the adjacent list. Now I want to add into adjacent list. I want to add um, the um, result. No, I want to add. Yeah, I want to add result. So now that should make it that should fill up adjacent list. But I need to do um, I just need to do change cell content. I need to do this as well. So repeat um, change index to um, and duplicate. So that that should find um, the, the this should find anything adjacent to my current cell. And it will pop it will pop it into the adjacent list. So, to, so if I get basically 
um, populate adjacent and I go, well, I've got my current column and my current row. And, and then I'm not looking for fish, so I basically just have to say, like, I'm not looking for fish, so 1 equals 0, because 1 doesn't equal 0, so that's false. So then it's like, the idea is that I'm saying, show me, like, populate this adjacent list. Once I've done that, I'll then use the size of the list to pick a random number to get an item out of the list to pick a cell that I'm going to be moving into. So, how do I test this? I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to do like. Um, oh, actually, I'll tell you what I can do. If I go. Um, the old space bar. Because what I can do is copy that. If I um if I basically put numbers into there, delete block, delete block. So okay. This this fish here is um, 10, 6. So if I say 10, 6, what do I expect to be in here in my JSON list? Well, I expect to be 1, 2, 3, 4, I expect there to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 entries in there for a start. So let's run it. Uh, there's 8 entries in there, so that's not quite right, is there? So 10, 6, I got, I should, there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 entries in there, but it's put 8 in. Okay, so it's not it's not exactly worked then. Um, so seventy seven, it would have gone. Do you know what? I just need to I need to modify the sprite a bit so it says um, when I'm clicked on. I want 10 six, but I also want um, I also want banana. I also want um, the the cell number as well. How's that join them? Join. Because because then, then I can at least see that it's sort of. Oh, what, is it, what have I just done? I need to add the column. I need to grab that hop in and put in the banana. And grab that hop in and put in there. Now it should say um, 95 as well. So this is 95. I've got 60. Now I've got 77. I've got 78, 79. So it should have put 77, 78, 79 in here. It hasn't. And it should have put like, yeah, so it, that is, it's not working. I mean, it's doing sort of something, but it clearly isn't working. Um, OK, so let me just try and explain what it is I'm trying to do. With this popular adjacent thing, so I'm trying to um, I'm trying to say start at minus one, and then so you take away one from the column, you take away one from the um, from the row. This might be why it's not working actually, because I think that that needs to be one. But I don't think this should make a difference. But okay, so 77, 78, 79, and then I've got 94, 111, 112, 113. So again, it hasn't worked. Did we set index one? I do. Look, index one's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you, because I need, I need to set. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's not one though, is it? Because one should only go up by three. Oh no, it is one. I'm doing it. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. 
Okay. But I just want to go the other way around now. 78, 70, so I'm expecting 77, 78, 79, 94, 111, 112, 130. Oh god. Oh god, what have I done? Stop. Stop. Ah. So that does work. So I, that has that has got that that did work. That found every empty space around that fish, okay, and put it into that adjacent list. So let's try it with something like, um, so this shark here. Hold on, let me let me empty some stuff out of my variables. Um, so. This is this shark is number. Oh, I'll tell you what I haven't done as well. I haven't um, checked to see whether it's inside my range. Um, so, like, you could actually end up with adding stuff on the over the edges, which was a problem I had before. So, if I click on this one here, I've got five and seventeen. So let's go five and seventeen, and um, let's look for fishes. So one equals one. Well, that's not right, is it? What do you mean greater than, greater than minus one? What do you mean greater than minus one? I mean, fishes just doesn't work, does it? Oh, 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 oh. Because I also I need to have the I need to have not fish. I need to have not fish and content is zero. Because otherwise it's always gonna it's always gonna put in content. So that should that that should give me one, two six, two hundred and sixty. So that's saying there's a fish in two hundred and sixty. There's a fish. For you to eat in 260, and if I change that to zero, then that should say there's there's your empty spaces. Um, now, why the shuddering fuck does that work? Because surely it should have tried to. If you're gonna add everything above minus one, just do greater than minus one. I'm not gonna add everything above minus one. That's not that's not what I'm trying to do. Look, this this is saying find empties. So I don't want to find the fish in this case. Empties. That's not finding the fish. If I if I make that true, then it's now it's finding the fish. So it's two sixty. I know that's really weird. I can you just can you just write true and false into a box for for booleans? You can't, can you? So even though even though it can take a boolean parameter. In this function, I just want to say yes or no, like yes, look for fish, or no, don't look for fish. But I can't, you can't actually do that. You can't just say true or false. So all I've done is I've just said one equals one, because one equals one is true, which means that if fish is true, then it's going, if fish is true and then content is greater than zero, then it will only find if there's a fish. But, or if there's not fish and the content equals zero, so there's two different, two different situations, it's saying if I've if I, so now I can go find fish using that function and it finds fish. And if I say that, then it finds empties. And it's just two, two different things. Like, can you do you know why it's only putting four things in there? Because I haven't done a check anywhere. And did I do it on find ocean? No. Set result to that. If result I don't understand. Um Oh, maybe it's not changing it because there's nothing in the list. Maybe because it, maybe because it, yeah, that's a problem. Like maybe because, or well, maybe if, like if I did one, if I do one, one, then it will try and check like that one first, and I wonder if it will then put a bunch of them in. 
Yeah, it's not that's because like one is not one is not adjacent to one. One, two, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oh, that's just not worked at all. Um, I don't need to do that then. Um, I think what I need to do in here is um, Yeah, you can't, you can't. That's the that's the other thing. That's the problem here is that this this is not going to work because um, that's all right. That's all right. Actually, it's fine because I, I just need to. I just I just need to check if um, if it's like a valid place to be checking. Um, No, Glenn, that's not what you want to do. Oh, for God's sake, if Colpus index is less than zero, if Colpus index is not less than zero, or Plus index is great. Ocean weight. That or that. And duplicate that. I just need like a row plus. No, no, you need you need a row plus index one. If a row plus index one is less than zero, or a row plus index one is greater than ocean length, ocean height. Um and that's an and and that's an and and that is a all into a not. No, if that's if that is Oh, that's totally wrong, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't need a not. Delete. 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 So if um column plus um index is greater than zero or um Column plus index is less than that. So if either of those two are true, and either of these two are true, which I need to switch around as well, um, um, ocean height is greater than row plus index. No, row plus index is less than ocean height. Then I can do that. And that now says if I if you drag and drop pieces into a list they fill these things. Oh yeah, I I sort of knew that. I know I didn't do that. Well, I haven't fixed that. So that's annoying. Damn it, why does it think one is valid? Oh one is valid. 
Oh my god, you fucking idiot. That was working. Oh, that was working, literally. To check edge of board, well one checks if value is equal to bracket bracket. What does that mean? Does that what it's set to if it's not in the net or something? Ugh. So I could I should have checked that really, shouldn't I? Really. If I do um why the brackets? So Yeah, but then I guess so. I didn't really need that. I was just I'm just doing that. I didn't fucking need it because it's working. Because it, if there's nothing in there, there's no value, and no value isn't greater than zero or anything like that. So none of those things come like come true, almost. Like that's the same. One is empty. Two is empty. No, it's not. It isn't working though, is it? Properly because um, it's doing. Um, the, the calculation that I've put in, no, I do need that. But is that different? Because it shouldn't be putting 17 in there, because that's 17. That's not adjacent. Oh, where's that gone? Oh. So if I do that again, is it going to still put 17 in there? Well, why does it still put 17 in there? It should have put 17 in there. Because it... Hang on. So, so it's not, so it's not right here. Is this going to... God, how the hell do you debug this, though? If I do 2-2, two, two, I should just get everything around 2-2. Two, two. Apart from apart from no, it's not working now, so I've fucked it. Because it's putting the fish in there as well now. Oh that is it. So one, it's gone for one, it's gone for two, it's gone for three, and then it's gone for 18, 19, and 20. And then it's gone for 35, 36. Oh no, eight. That's correct. That's absolutely right. Looks as if, it, yeah. But why is it put in? Can you understand why it's putting? If I put one one, can you understand why it's putting seventeen in there? Because seventeen is that. Oh, but I don't. So hang on. So it's going one two, seventeen eighteen. Why does it think seventeen is one? It should just have. Oh, that's so stupid. Why does it think 17 is valid? <sighs> Why is 17 a number that no, it's okay with? Um, just no way to step into this or anything, is it? Fair enough. So, if my column plus index is greater than zero, then it's all good. Or, if my column plus index is less than the ocean width, then it's all good. So, I've made a column, I've taken one away, whatever, fine. So how did I end up as, how did it end up checking, like, number 17. So if my row plus index is greater than zero, or my row plus index, that's where it's wrong, isn't it? My, or is it no, less than ocean height. So, so my row is less than ocean height. So
So my my um my grid is um is set up to read um my ocean content here. So let's have a look of what I'm expecting is true. So I'm expecting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, number eight to be um, a fish. I'm expecting it to be set to 40, number eight, and it is. So that does look like essentially it's going along. That's one, that's 17. So that is 37. And 37 is, for, is a 40 as well. So 37 is a fish, 40 is a fish. Um, so that's so that looks right. And the, so ten should be minus eight. My minus ten is a fish or something. So sharks. So that's a shark. That's a fish. Um. So it's just that weird thing of it deciding in that top corner. It thinks that number seventeen, which is that, is a valid adjacent space. Now, well, how does it generate seventeen from that? Like, if you go, if you're going one. Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it because oh I'll tell you how actually I know I think I, well no because it, mm -mm. I can see sort of how it might do it yeah it might it might be it might yeah, I think it's got I think it must be something I think I think what is happening is that when it tries to check. The um, square that's here, so it's basically minus one on the column. Oh, zero on the column. If column plus index is less than zero, that's why, because that can't they can't be less than one. I I think that will sort it out. Oh my god, it didn't. It fucking didn't. Because it. Oh my god, it didn't. Why didn't that sort it out? Bro plus index is greater than one. Column plus index is greater than one. Ah, that, that, that definitely should have fixed it. But the thing is that what I'm saying is, it's checking, is I think that it will try and check this square here. And in theory, that square there is is also 17. Like mathematically, that's 17, but actually so is that. Because that is minus one column. But it's on row two, so it'll be like seventeen times two plus. Yeah, yeah. That that is why I think that is why. It's because when it's trying to check that square, but it shouldn't be trying to check that square because I'm saying to it, don't, don't, um, it's. I'm saying if the column and the row that I will need to check are within um, are within the grid. Then do it. So this this thing here should be doing it. Yeah, but how do you split the values up? Oh, what you do two ifs. Well, that. That's, that's all. Yeah, I know, but if I load it and I've got like. Stop putting 17 in! 17 is not okay! Oh, why, 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 why? Why, why, why 17? Why, 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 why exactly be more constructive with your feedback? So it should be empty. Yeah, seventeen. But finish up to zero. Let's put seventeen in there. This. Oh man. Oh man. Like, like, there's no, there's no reason it should be put in there. How do you debug it? How can I debug this? Okay, I can put index one and index two on the screen. So they're here. If one is smaller than column plus index, oh yeah, 
Yeah, that's right. That is right. Because if... No, 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 no. They should have been zero. They should have been zero. That was, that was the right that they were zero in the first place. So if you go if you go back, let's put a thing in here. Wait for some amount of time. Okay. Then I can see when it is doing something. And let's put a result in as well. So result is very, very visible here. Uh, result should be visible. I can see. Let's undo that. Okay. So now, if I if I run this, I'm gonna go. It's gonna go show me that. Yeah. I mean, that's going too fast for me to understand right now. So let's just put the other thing in. Uh, now I have to hope I don't have a fish in my corner. That's fine. I don't. So my result. So I start, I start this and I check that corner square and I get minus one, minus one. So it's minus 15, minus 32. Why is the result a weird number there? That's strange. So let's check it to 17 and the 17 was okay. Why did it get to 17? Why did you get to 17? <coughs> Um, why is that still going? I mean, I didn't do anything there, did I? Why is that still going? That doesn't make sense. Stop. What? What the? <laughs> what? Repeat three. Repeat three. Minus one, one, one. Minus one, zero, one, minus one, zero, one. How, why did they keep going? That, that's so broken. So they just kept going beyond the repeat value because I told it to wait. Okay, so when you got 17, how do I, how can I make this? Row minus one times. Why would I want to say if zero is greater? No, because I'm saying if it is, then do it. And that this is saying if um, if the column plus index, which is the number that I'm trying to check, is bigger than zero, and or if it's if it's um, oh, wait a minute, that's not right anyway, is it? I mean, I don't. I don't think that would affect it because oh no it will actually no we shouldn't because there's no way it can get higher because I'm not adding enough to a zero to make it higher that is wrong that should that, that should have been an and but that doesn't that doesn't that wouldn't have been why it was broken because there's no way that um it was checking to see if it was higher because there was nothing um there's nothing there. But like, if you if you're so it's minus one two is checking now, and then it should go back to checking. Um, but like there should have been a freaking result with minus one two though. Oh, there isn't though. What's happening now? Are you broken? You seem broken.
Well, now it's not working. Oh, you might be right then. I guess my brilliance is totally wrong. What determines result? Well, this here defines this function. It sets result to rho minus um, ocean width plus column. I, I guess that this is not this is wrong, but I'm just an idiot. But so I'm saying if column plus index is greater than zero, that is what I'm saying. And, and if column plus index is less than ocean width, and like the, the ocean width and ocean height should be set. They're both seventeen. That is that is right. If, if ocean width is great, if ocean width is greater than that. Which means that it's less than ocean width. Um, but actually, it can, it can be equal to ocean width as well, and there's no equals to thing here, which is so annoying. Um, but you can just switch it around. Like, basically, It's not doing anything anymore. It's just like no, 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 don't fancy it. Says row or column. What's what's row or column? Column and rows. It's here. It's passed in from that. So nothing is working. Oh wait, it might be because oh, I put that pause in it. No, I'm just looking at what happened. Oh no. Okay. One two seventy nine nineteen. That's what it comes out. On. One two seventy nine nineteen. If I am I was trying to put a pause in so that I could um, if I find it and then put a pause in, then I can't really see those two values there. That's the problem. So it goes minus one minus one, goes naught and minus one, goes minus one zero, naught naught, and it goes one naught, minus one one, and minus one one gives it a seventeen, which is so so minus one one gives it a seventeen. So if minus one one gives it a seventeen, then that means that column minus one and row one, and that's what I was saying, would give it a seventeen. That means that column is minus one. But didn't I didn't I fucking say that? Isn't that checking that? That's, that that should not allow it. That should be checking. If column is minus one, I what is wrong with it? What, seriously, I don't understand what the fuck is wrong with this bloody boolean. It's like I don't understand boolean logic anymore. I mean, I do, and I'm pretty sure that I'm doing it right.
Oh, hang on a second. It should not be on Sunday. I don't know if that would have made a difference. Um, the thing is, if I do that, what, what you're suggesting, if I do what you're suggesting, then my result won't change, but I, but I will still be using it to push into a list. So I fixed it. I don't I I think that it was somehow broken because that was in there. Well technically it was in there. And I think that, that meant that it wasn't incrementing it, but then that should have been an infinite freaking loop. So it can't have been that. Oh wait, unless I was incrementing it here. No, no, it just doesn't make sense. It's now working and it wasn't before, and I'm pretty sure that it should have been working both times. I don't know why, but look, there's no 17 in there now. Let's just do a, bit, a few more tests. So that's working. Let's um, let's delete those and um, not delete, but hide them. Just hide the Asian content. Right. Let's do a test on 1717 as well, because that's the more extreme. And I'll do it on my other corners as well, just to make sure. So 17, 17. So 17 is saying that um, 271, 272, 288 and 299 are free, and they are, that's absolutely correct. Um, if I do the other corner, so 17 and 1, um, and then try that, I get 16, 17, 33 and 34. So again, that's totally right. Um, so that's working now. And then I should try that bottom corner as well. That'll be 117. And hopefully now that's that's that should really confirm. So 256, 257, 273, and 274. So that is Right, so my adjacency is working corners. Let's just try and see if it's working there because that's an interesting one. 5 and 17, so 5 and 17, and I'm saying empty. So 5 and 17, um, every time it reads the list and finds 17, change it by 1. Oh, you mean you mean basically um, it's like a load test. You say do the thing a hundred times and see whether any time it happens it comes it puts a seventeen on the list. So that I'll see whether it was inconsistent or not, uh, or whether it, whether it happens or yeah, I, I get that. You're basically saying test. You're basically doing it being a, a, like a load unit, a lot of unit tests on it to say does it ever go wrong. Um, that's quite. A good idea, but I don't believe in spooky stuff. So 
Right, so that one works because it's put five things in there. And then if I change it to look for a fish, um, it finds a fish in 278. And just to make sure it doesn't find sharks, let's go 1017 and we'll look for fish first. Um, so, so we'll look for fish first, one equals one empty, and we'll look for empty spaces. And we have 264, 266, but no 265. So that works. So it can either find fish around it or it can find empty spaces around it um, by, by, by doing this popular adjacent thing. Okay, that it definitely works. I'm happy that it works. I know you, what you're saying about. Actually, let, let's do your thing, right? So basically, I want to populate adjacent. Um, oh, that's not worked. Oh, oh, great. Oh, great. Tell me why that's happening. Oh, we've got the zeros in there. There's literally no such thing as a zero. Right, so 1, 2, 18, 17. It's never putting 17 in that list. And I'm pretty happy with that. Like, I could make that test, but come on. It's definitely not going to do it anymore. So, I don't know what was wrong with it, but I think it's fixed. I think it's fixed, basically. Um, so, let's take this loop here. This is supposed to be our, like, stepper, stepper, uh, like, um, our, like, world. What? So good at what? Have you got your thing working? Let's take that out of there for now. And let's define a block. It's nearly, nearly two o'clock, so I need to have lunch and clean the house up. But I'm going to make a block called um, simulation step. And um, that's going to be that's defined. Yeah, so simulation step. And simulation step is going to take. So now I've got that populate adjacent. What I was trying to do, delete. So this populate adjacent now should give me any f empty spaces around it. And I'm going to move. Well, you need to get network functionality on it so that so we can both play on the same game, but over the network. I really don't think you could do that in Scratch, can you? Um, right. So. What is this thing here on the bottom? Oh, that's like, yeah, that's so that I could do the um, shark stuff later. Yeah, you can make it, I saw that, you can make your control go. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Corporate adjacent, current column, current row. So this is basically saying that the adjacent list is now going to be populated with anything that I can possibly move into. Now, you want basically you want to you want to do um, move um, from and uh, to, so that's going to let me move stuff. Where is that? So this this will here will go take a value um, and um, move that thing from that grid value to that grid value. So that is basically just going to go. Um, um, set. Oh no. Um, replace. Item two. Um, with item from. Uh, rename list. Delete. Ocean list. Uh, ocean content. Ocean content. 
ocean content. So it's saying um, replace item in to with item from from, and then it's going to it's going to replace item um, from with a zero. So that's just going to let me move from and to. I can get that bit of that. I don't need that. Provided that works, of course. And then we can actually we can you know this is the, this is why I like having these little methods because you can test them now because I can just get my spacebar thingy and I can just test to see if I can move a fish as a fish. So if I get my block, I go move, and I want to move the fish from seven from one four three to one two five. So I'll go one four three to one two five, and I'll cut spacebar. Oh wait a minute, I also need to then um, broadcast. Um, ocean changed. Okay, so space. It didn't work. It totally didn't work. Uh, so, oh, it might have actually ocean content. I didn't know, did it? I don't know. Maybe it did. One four three. It probably did actually, because I think I've ended up. I've ended up duplicating it because I didn't empty that one out. So, if I want to move one nine six. To 197, I will go this. Should be watching it, really. Ruined it. So if I want to move 56 to 57. I think the trouble is when I try and click, it's running it, so it's mo it's just moved 56 to 197 before I could have a chance to um, to do to, to move it to where I wanted it. So I want to move 106 to 107. Okay, it moved it, and then it, and then it emptied it out because I was actually moving an empty over the top of it afterwards. So. That's working then, so my move works. It's fine, don't need to leave that. Um, I actually want to put um, simulation step in here. So when I click space, I do a simulation step. That would just let me test that. Uh, so this will be, I've got that in there. And what I want to do is I want to move my fish to a random space. So I want to go, OK. I think that I have now probably deleted my ocean space because I'm using find ocean spaces um, in here. So I need to redo that. So just do find ocean cell. So I populate my list. I need to do this again because I've I've also I've, I've basically I've overwritten um, copy oh, duplicate. I've overwritten that um, that uh, result. So result. So now I want to uh, now I basically want to go and move that to one of my free slots. So I would, I would do move um, result to, and then I I know that I've got I am one two three four. So my length is four. So I just need a random number between one and four, and then I need to do. Um, uh, get item. So get. How do you program check? What do you mean by that? Um, tag every space a piece can move. What do you mean? By team. Oh, 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 check, check. Um, difficult. 
pretty fucking difficult. You would have to run, you would have to go over every single one of your possible things that can move. That would be a nightmare in, in, in Scratch, I'd imagine. You'd ha you're going to have to go and say, yeah, every possible destination for all your pieces is, is, in, is in somewhere. Every piece has got every destination. And then your king has got to say, well, am I in one of them? And can I move to anywhere where there isn't one of them? That's going to be, yeah, I don't know. That's going to be horrible. Um, Size. Can I do size? Length of. And then item. Random item from that list. This is going to take ages though, isn't it? Because. No, not necessarily. Let's see how long it takes. So when I press space, it's going to be one step. <laughs> it did. It didn't do anything. It did. It didn't do anything, did it? <laughs> Fuck. Am I doing that thing again where I'm not changing current or column? I mean, it's, my JSON list hasn't even changed. That's weird. You'd have to. I think you'd, you'd have to do a check at the start of your um, of a turn. So when you swap turns over, you'd have to check. You'd have to do a scan to see whether the king was in check or not, or after a move, or one or the other. Pretty much the same point, though, isn't it? Well, it's not working for no discernible reason. Does it even get to that part? Like, is it making my fish die? No, like the, the, it's not even making a fish die. It's not. It's not even doing that. Find an ocean cell. If I am in a result of ocean cell, it's greater than zero. Then a place I am in a result of ocean cell with result minus one. Oh, wait. No, but it's not doing that, though. <laughs> it's not, like, that's wrong. Because that should be like replace with item result minus one. No, it shouldn't. Yeah, it should be. 
it should be no it shouldn't be it should be item result minus one of ocean list but it's not doing that it's not doing anything is it it's, it's not oh my goodness like what the heck all right let's just try and take it simpler I mean that does work doesn't it so this this does that loop repeat for ocean height set current call oh wait set current row and then repeat for ocean width And then set current column. I think I just I think I'm just not doing any of the fucking numbers properly here. Delete. Wait, it's just drawing a whole load. Of, what? Like, how on earth do do you end up just drawing a random load of sharks across the bottom of your screen? Especially when I've. <laughs> that is weird. That is so weird. Okay, so. You set the current row inside the height. So you set the current row first. And then you set the current column. Oh my god, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Oh you wanna go you wanna set current row. And then you wanna go for the height, and then you wanna set the current column to one. And then you want to repeat ocean width, and then at the end you want to change the current column by one. And I just need to delete that because that that's just going to get in the fucking way. Because that I might actually make. Is anything happening? No, it's not. What is, what is going on? So you set that, set that. Increase current column, increase current row. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get this thing to run. And basically, this is supposed to go through every item in my um, thing and then make a fish randomly, make the fish randomly move. So this is supposed to be uh, fishes. Every fish. Every fish gets older by a day, and then if it's still alive, it moves. And, um, oh my, that did something two times there. Did you see that? Did you see it? It did it. It did something. I wonder why, I wonder why it's stopping after two, twice or something. Oh man, that's really weird. Current column, current row. So I hit 1818. 18. Spacebar. What changes result? The, the result is set from that frickin' function. Um, find ocean cell. So that the result is that of that. Well, it should be. I don't. That's that shouldn't be there, should it? Ocean, preach ocean high. That shouldn't be there. Way there we go. Baby shark, did do 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 do. Baby shark, did do 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 do. Baby. <laughs> right. So all that's happening right now is that my fish are living.
but for some reason they've all died at different times, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so this isn't working still. And the poor sharks are left fishless. Every fish should die at the same time at this point. But the result is what you are using to score through ocean current. No, I'm not. Am I? No, I'm not. Ocean content. Yeah, so find ocean cell in is gives me back. Where is it? I might be doing this wrong, but find ocean cell sets the result to, to a number, and that number is supposed to be the number of the index in my um, in my ocean content. So that is, that should be right. And then I'm and then I'm doing a bunch of stuff. This is so but the result you're using to scroll through ocean constant. No, am I is that not what what's happening? So if I click space, it's that should have moved all my fishes by one. Oh, uh, well no, I mean that's clearly not what happening because it's not working. But if you look, what's weird is that some of my fish have got oh Oh, uh, I think I know why. You need the number one. You need the hash one. No, I don't. Oh. Oh. Wait. The num item something. So what's this then? What does that do? So, but what does what does the other one do? So I need number. I need the number from. Oh, no, no, I don't. No, 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 no I don't. No. No, no, that was right. That well, let's, hang on. That is right. Yeah, the number one tells me the number of the of the of the thing in the position. But the the num the but I don't want it to do that. I want it to tell me the the, the item in that location. This is doing the right thing. But the problem is is at the minute is that I can't. Um, you can't have, you can't have, um, you can't, what, what will happen is that if, if, it, if a fish is at the top left, it will move all the way along because the each step, what you need to do for each step is um, is have an image because otherwise, otherwise the functions are running on the, um, on themselves. Basically I need another list which is ocean content image. And I need to um, how am I making each fish move? Because it, I'm I'm going through each square, and I mean, if it's a fish, I'm moving it through a random space, but. The problem is that the next time I look in that square, the fish might be there that's already moved there. Because so I, what I need to do is I need to I need to um, well look. So this is this goes through each square. This says this is doing a repeat on height and a repeat on width, and as it goes through, it increments the row and the, and the column. So I've got a two-dimensional loop, so it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. It's going to go through that, and I've got two numbers. I've got current row and current column. Current row and current column in here do this, find ocean cell, and that turns that turns that turns those two numbers into a position in my list. So if I've got, if I want to get this one, this is why I've got all these numbers clicking around on here. So number 11, 11, 11 1 is number 11 in my list. 12, 6 is number 97 in my list. 14, 17 is 286 in my list. And it does that translation. 
So it, it can take two numbers and make it into a point in my list. And I can prove that if I click on that, that's 6 and 5, and that's 74 in my list. 74 in my list, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see it's a shark. Look, it's minus 10, so it's a shark. So it knows that 74 is a shark. So that is that sets result to the position in the list. So now I'm pretty much I didn't I don't need to do like do it like that. I could just go go from number one all the way to number whatever and go one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 289 and just do it like that. But the reason I'm not doing it like that is because I want to go through columns and rows so that I know which column and row I'm currently on, so that I know how to move, how to find adjacent spaces around. Because if I'm saying I'm on two, and then and then the adjacent function populates the adjacent list of stuff that I can go to, and then I can move into a random one of them. Actually, I need to do a little one little thing here. I need to check um, if the um, the length of adjacent list is greater than one because it's, it's greater than zero because otherwise you can't move so it won't move if it can't move um, the, but the thing what the thing I've got a problem with is that I'm trying to move inside um, why should I de-age them all in a single step and then move them all? That means I'm doing two loops through all of the, all of the data. Oh, right. But the thing is, even if you do that, you can still chain move a, a fish. Like, if I, basically, if there was a fish on on here, um, it would, it could, it would pretty much just go all the way, um, to the end. Well, I can show you actually. Um, so when space is pressed, um, if you go set, if I no, that's not right. Replace um, item one of ocean content with um, forty. So if I if I do that, um, oh no, I need to broadcast that as well. So there's a f now I put a fish in my in my item one. Now if I run a simulation step, one single simulation step, I think that that fish is gonna is gonna if it randomly moved, if it randomly moves to there, well actually if I make it so it can only randomly move to there. No, it doesn't matter. So basically, if I run it now, I oh, it just ran. Did it just run? Thirty-eight. Yeah, it just didn't. It just. It actually probably there. It just moved and then moved back to where it came from, and but because it moved to where it went and then mapped back to where it came from, it lost two ages and didn't move. But look, it's, it can jump around all over the place. So even if I did, look, it's, it's only twenty-eight now. Like it's lost twelve years in like three moves. But if you de-age them all at once, that's fine. They'll only be age, but they can still chain move even if you do, even if you did do that. I think what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to make it so that when they move, when each square is dealt with, um, it it um, it goes it get re it goes into here. But it means that I need to check. Oh, that's actually I don't know how to do this because. You can't, if you move, if you, you need to check adjacency. Oh, fuck it. They can check adjacency in the existing map. So they all move simultaneously. On the move block. I don't think I, don't think I do. Are you, what, here? That. No, I don't. I don't. That works. Because it that's that is that is going to um Ah, well actually. No, because item number of the thing. 
Yeah, that's getting me in under a bit. Oh right. Do you think it's do you think it's that? No, that returns a number of the thing in my list. You're not finding a numbered list on it. What do you mean I'm not finding a numbered list on it? You're looking for a number on the list. No, I'm not. I'm looking for the the position. Like I've got a position in a list. The, these here, these are all positions in my list, the, the adjacents. And the current one is, is result. So result is the current position, and the adjacents are the are the are the, um, are the potential moving positions. I'm just, I'm sure this is right. The point, the thing I the thing I need to do is I need to um, make it so that. When I'm when when my fish are moving, they are um, they can't move into an empty, into a, into a space that was already empty. So they So what I need to do, I think I need to do, It's not picking a random entry. It's looking for a random number between one and length of the list as an entry. Oh. No, no, no. No. Like what you mean here? This is this is picking this because because you, that is saying the item at number something in the list. You don't no, the number one tells you the number one tells you the, the location of a value. Why does it say thing now? Oh. Why does it say thing? Oh, it's because I've done that. It's because I've done. Are you sure? Because I think that I think that this works exactly the same way as everything else does. When, when the, oh look, I can just print it. I can just, I can just show you. I can just show you. I, I, but this does work because. When you when I'm saying item something in a list, look that says item 134. That's item 134. Item 134 in the list is um, well. How does that work? Well, now it's doing a f now it's putting that in there. That's ruined it. But you you can't really do it because. Oh, what you say? Remove that. Ninety, thing, thing. Yeah, because adjacent list is full up of stuff now for some for some reason. Back, delete, block. I need to run. I need to run a step to get the adjacent list locked out. No, from the pink box. Yeah, I got that. Sorry. If I if I run a step now. Um, it's not going to move anything, but it will make an adjacent list. Okay, now I've got four things in the adjacent list, right? If I click it, look, I'm going to get a random number from that. 257, 273, 257, 273, 273, 239. See, that is picking a random number from one of the four numbers in my box. That's what I want it to do. One, 274, 257. See, that, that's, that is exactly what I want it to do. And then I want it to move from there to there. Does it not do that anyway? Um, but 
what I need to do is I need to place no I don't no I don't I need to go from from that to place item 2 of ocean content image That won't work, will it? Insert item from at two of ocean content image. No, don't fancy doing that. Insert item from of ocean content at at two of ocean content image. But the trouble is I think it's because ocean content image doesn't have uh, anything in it. So I need to go and move. Can you make it so that ocean content image I need to like fill up ocean content image with it with it empties. So if I just have like repeat repeat um, for ocean width and ocean height um, Insert add thing to add naught to ocean content and and can you do delete all delete all of ocean content? No, ocean content image. Ocean content image. And reset. And we just make a block. Called reset image. Um, so that shouldn't happen, really. Should that definitely shouldn't happen because. These should stay at 40. I oh, know they're not though, they are going down. Yeah. And then I need to do copy over. So I need to go. Um, So this this one should basically go through everything in the length. So it should go delete all of ocean and then it should basically go add Hmm. So I need a counter. So I need a counter here. So I can just use index. I can just use an index. Um, so variable index one. So index one. So set index one to one 
a P for um, ocean image size, length of ocean image, and then add um, add item index one. And item index one of JSON list. No, of, no, add item index one of ocean image to ocean content. So that should delete. So if I go, if I reset the image, uh, so it's all empty now. So I want to place ocean with image. And I want to reset image at the top. So to reset ocean image, generate your ocean, place ocean with image, and then that should. Oh, I just feel my screen. <laughs> that, is, that is literally hilarious. Like, <laughs> that is the most. Like that is the least expected thing that I thought could possibly happen. <laughs> is that I, I somehow made a, an entire world of sharks. Oh, and I think that might that's because like that's not worked at all, is it? Oh, I put repeat ten in there. That's why. So, so I need to do repeat. I thought, I'm sure I did that actually. Oh no, I've done that wrong. So I needed to put that in there. But now I've killed all my fish. So let's regenerate my fish. So what I've done here is I've made like a copy of my list, of my of my map. So that when anything moves, it could move based on the current state. So everything moves simultaneously. Uh, that's it failed to load. I'm looking at here. Um, okay. Well, that didn't work. Why didn't that work then? To ocean, because I am index one of ocean content. To ocean with content. Oh, because I'm not in. I'm not. I always do it. So I need to incre I need to increment the bloody change um, index by one. Now I need to, I've, I've killed all my fish again. So, and I killed my sharks last time as well. So pretty impressive. So I can hide that Jason just now because I don't. I think I'm pretty sh pretty happy with that. Okay. Right. So my ocean content is here. And I've got an image somehow already. I must have accidentally triggered it. So all my sharks have gone, and I, that makes sense because I didn't um, I didn't copy them across. So my fish are now swimming around, um, and they should all die at this. Oh, how did that happen? That was really weird. They just they just all went down to the end of the map to die somehow. I I don't, I don't think that's working still. Um, so if it's so basically I'm saying if I'm a fish um then do something. Where's the if I'm a fish there? Am I a fish? So if I'm not a fish, then actually I just want to um
Um, so like if I'm not a fish, then I've got an else now, and that is just going to be um, moving result to result, because then that should um, that should keep my sharks alive. So, step, my shark shouldn't move anywhere. I mean, my fish have all died instantly. I, I don't understand that. Like, I don't fucking know what's going on, but this is not right. Like, it's not right. Oh, hang on, my ocean, my ocean link thing is, is not... Reset image. Delete all of ocean content. content. Is that ever happening? Because how the and then how for each of those I've seriously come to it. Place ocean with image. Delete all of the content. Set index to one. So I've got two eighty nine here. If I run it one time, I sh I've ended up with five seventy eight in both places. I don't understand. Simulation step broadcast. Stop. Stop. Is my ocean content not getting reset properly? It should be. Populate ocean. It's 289. So I've got 289 in my ocean image, or 289 in my ocean content. And they should never change. They should both always be 289. But when I run this, it goes up to, it goes up to 578. Well, well that's that's the problem then. Um, well, why is it doing that? It must be on the move. Oh, because I'm doing insert. Oh, I, I need to replace. Oh, no. Hang on. So, replace. I am. Um, Two in adjacent no in ocean image with ocean content. Fully in the block. So reset. 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 Go. So it's staying oh, fucking hell. So they stayed at 289, but like most of my fish died. How did that happen? So not I'm not doing something I'm not doing something right on this move. Um I place item two of ocean content image with item from of ocean content. This could, the bit that de-ages the app is here. So it goes it goes um, replace result of open content with result of, of ocean content minus one. So that that de-ages in ocean content. That's if it's a fish. So if I'm a fish then I, I de-age it. Is what a global variable? Result the result is, result is, um, is being set by um, find ocean cell. I mean that does work because it, it is just the agent once. I mean we could just take that bit out. And I could, we could show you that it, it, if I just if I literally I think if I just the age everything. Yeah, all your clones were doing the same thing, but my clones don't do anything. Um, my clones just change their clothes based on what's in the, in the grid. They don't do anything. So that they will basically just go when 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 they receive the broadcast to um, that the ocean has changed, they just set their costume based on what's in the ocean content. So that that's all they do. Um, so what is that? Some random thing. 
So, but I literally, I could, I could just have it so that they de-age, 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 die. I could do, I could literally do that, and that would work. I'm pretty sure. So, if I take that whole thing out there, um, take that off, take that out, then that, they're just going to keep getting older and then die. And so, if I start it. But actually, if I'm if I start my simulation and I make the fishes age, um, start at like five instead. So fishes are they, they only have five days to live. Um, then I can just go one, two, three, four. All my fishes dead. So that works. Um, the problem is when I when I'm what I'm trying to do now is when I'm when I then move them to a random space I don't change the the um, the layout of this grid at all so they all sort of move simultaneously so the move the simultaneous move oh that was wrong so that should be that and then I've, I've pretty much got here. Um, so if it wasn't a fish, then it just transfers that across. Um, so that was to keep my sharks alive, and that bit works as well. Though. The sharks seem to keep go, keep going on as well. Um, I don't know why it doesn't move these things with me. Oh, it does. Am I still alive? So if I'm still alive, then um, populate the adjacency grid um, and um, Oh, hang on. Was that like that before? Because that should have been like that. Because then, because oh, that's interesting. Because that might have been doing some really nonsense moves and overwriting stuff there. Because that wasn't part. That wasn't part of this. So it was like even. Oh, let's try it now. So I've got five days to live, but now they're also moving. Two, three. But look, they're all going. They're all, they're, they, they should have. I mean, the, the ones that are there are still on the right number. They're all on two, but like they're all just fucking vanishing. Um, so that's something wrong with the move, maybe. Um, how does what work now? So they all try and move at once. So if they if they can move, then I just put them into a new table, like an empty. So this one here is like an empty ocean. So the idea is if the fish can move, it can go there. Instead of moving it there, I put it into the place it should go in the empty ocean. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. And if they try and move into the same space, they'll just merge into one single mega fish. Yeah. So then, so then, how can you do it so that they only can move once? You'd have to, you'd have to set the value in the square to say that you all they've already moved. Like, you'd have to make it be a special case of just like, you know, minus a million, and that means they've already moved. And then you have to replace it, but you can't do that because you need to know how how old they are. So I guess I guess that must mean that what's happening here is a bunch of the fish try and move into the same space, and then they just merge into a mega fish. But does that seem likely? Yeah. Well, the thing is, the fish will start to make babies randomly after a certain amount of days. But look, 
the amount of them have just disappeared there. So yeah, when they spawn a new baby, they'll they'll look. That's fucking nuts. That's I don't I, um I don't really know why. Okay, how do I get around the problem that my fish can merge into a mega fish? Well, I guess if they leave behind, if they, if you blank out the spaces they used to be and make them available until they till they've been used, then it's sort of like they can pass each other, but as soon as one of them does, another one can't. So what you can do on a move then is what we'd have to do is we'd have to. Tag them, tag them how? Oh right, no. I think, I think, what I need for for overlap, I think what I need what I need to do is um when I'm checking for available spaces. I need to look. Um, I need to look. In both, in both, I think. Uh, shit. Yeah, but how can you tell if it's moved or not? How can you tag it to say it's moved? Right, and then and then like just remove all of the ends off the end afterwards. Yeah, you, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit yeah, okay. Oh no, but you could you could um No, I don't know. Like, like having the two grids, you're right, people things can merge, so it's not that it doesn't work at all, does it? It just doesn't work. So, I need to do place item two of ocean content with ocean content and then replace item from of ocean content with zero. So that's my move. Replace ocean with image can go and do that. Um, Close ocean view image can go and reset image can go delete and delete um, and so what I'm going to get now is that random um, like chaining chaining of stuff. So when I hit a space, they'll all move. Did my sharks die? I think my sharks probably died. I don't know why. I can I can delete I can delete that. Content delete. Why did my sharks die? If I'm a fish. Else I'm not a fish. I don't know why my sharks died. So this isn't working like because it's just killed everything. Oh no, wait. Why 
Why do my freaking sharks go away then? Um, oh, oh. I know why I went for. Oh, I don't need to do that though. I don't need to do that. Hang on. I don't need to do that now. They won't go away if I do. I don't need that. You're right. But but what if you, if I basically what you need to do is is you need to move a fish, and then you need to um. Uh, You need to um, replace Oh hang on, I can just do it here. Join Where's the join? Replace item two with um, From the thing is, though, if you do that, are you able to take the M's off? How do you take the M's off if they've got? How do you do a place? Can, is there a way to do a place? Yeah, but how do you create how do you create a value without the M on it? If I've got 137 M and I find 137 M somehow, how do I replace it with 137? I don't, I don't know how you do that. So my, my 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 fishes are five years old. Move them. They all turned into sharks. They've all turned into sharks. They all took pip. They've all turned they've all turned into sharks. I know where they will turn into sharks as well. Let one of item replaced equals M. Replace item with item replaced. That doesn't work. That definitely doesn't work. No, it doesn't. That doesn't. I'm sorry, but no. I've got. Number five has got has got a number in it. It's got like it's got like five in it because that's how old my fish is, right? So my fish is, and then I move, and it goes down to four, and it becomes four m. So if it's, so it says if it comes four m, yeah, but yours works because you knew that that you that the like the the number of in the in your thing was definitely the column, and then the number was definitely the row. That's not how mine works. If my fish has started 30, not 40 life, and I put an M on the end, I've got 40 M, or I've got M40. If I've got M40, how do I change M, well, M39? How do I change M39 back into 39? How do I change M37 back into 37? How do I change M minus 6 back into minus 6? The answer is I don't.
Um, basically, the other thing is that because my um, sprites are using the value to work out what skin to put on them, they've got an, an issue as well because they're going to have to try and take that number off. Right, that totally works. I totally got it. That totally worked. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but the thing is that that doesn't work because. It, because what if I say I want my fish to live to, to live for a hundred years? Well, I'm just like I don't want to. I don't want to have it so that I can't set a variable to to what I want it to be. So that because because I've restricted it. So I mean you. You, to be to be honest, you could you can do it because you can you can make a loop. You can make a loop that goes by how long, the, how like the length of it. So you can do the length of that, do a loop, make an index variable that increments, and use that to get your position, and then do a join onto another one. So you'd have a temporary one that's joining all of the bits on. So you can do that. But then I'd have to do that on my sprite every time I check the table to see what skin to turn on as well. Which I don't really want to do because like Yeah.
So I'm going to stop and I'm going to set um, my starting fish lights back to 40 and um, run it again. And I'm just check the stuff. But now what I'm what I'm doing is if if it moves, it puts the number of the square that's moved into here. And then this is like, well, if that square's already moved, then don't do anything. So I should be able to go move, and then every fish should be 39. Shouldn't be any fishes that aren't 39 in here. 39. 39, 39, 39, so look, and there should be the same amount of fish each time, so. so just swimming around, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, my sharks don't move yet, my fish are happy, they're like, yay, we're all like swimming around like little fucking fishes, and then they disappear all at the same time, because they're 40 years old, ah, oh, fucking hell, I mean, sorry kids, don't say that at home. Um, that was stage one of the fish life cycle. Now I just want to take that's annoying me. Hang on. Oh god. Oh god. Wait, wait. Reset image can go. So that's like fish age and move. And then you need to have a fish breed. <clears throat> As well, so the fish breed will be like, um, can I? Am I old enough to to make babies? So like, are you less of like, is you thirty, like barely thirty? And if you are, then you pop in. And I think we'll have it so that the babies um, don't move either. Well, it doesn't matter actually because I've moved everything at that point. So I move everything and then I pop the babies in. Um, so the fish move, they breed, and then once I've done that, your fish is between age 10 and 30. Well, if they're too old, then they don't either. Yeah. Um, you can do, you can change that around, but anyway, so then, then once that's done, then the sharks try to eat a fish, which means that they will look around if there's a fish that move in and eat it. And that will increase their hunger value. And if their hunger value is over a certain number, they will have a, a chance to make a baby as well. And I think that the, the there will be like a percentage, so it might be like there's a 2% a chance that a fish will, will breed um, um, because there's lots of fish, and then like a, a ten percent chance that the um, that the sharks will, or something like that. If the, but that's only if they've eaten. Maybe I'm not sure really how to do it. But Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the fish could have a chance of making more than one. Maybe it could be like for each empty space they have like a like a two like a half a percent chance of making it or something. Well, I mean they can't make more than the amount of spaces around them because they'll spawn them around them. Two hundred what? Two hundred babies? Is this a joke? Control if. I was at the wrong one actually. That's the wrong one. Just wait until we get to actually making baby sharks, it's going to be the best. Each time a shark moves, move a fish egg decreases the number of fish spawned by one. What? 
，我是 OK 什么？可是。Well, it's actually good. You can see that、um, the length of the ocean move is always 28, which means there's 28 fish, because there's 28 things that have moved. They all admit it, they're just all like mocking the sharks. They're all just like, no, 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 And then, of course, they would die. So the 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 sharks have the last laugh. <laughs>、uh, we are the sharks of the last laughington. Fish export eight fish. Then sharks move over fish, decrease the number of fish spawn. What? Yeah, but how do you do that? The sharks are nowhere near them.、Uh, they 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 can they. Right, I am going to stop this because I have got a guest coming tonight. I was supposed to clean the house, which is why I took a day off work, and it's now three o'clock, and I've done nothing but make baby sharks. Well, I haven't even made baby sharks yet. I've just made. I haven't even made baby fish yet. I've just made fish and sharks, but I'm going to get some baby sharks. Hundred percent, going to get some baby sharks. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark. Right, I am going to stop this madness and have some lunch.